Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, possibly video series, uh, I'll try to um, make uh, this smoke detector and CO detector uh, and turn it into a smart CO detector. So, uh, let's get started I guess. Uh, for reference, this is the smoke detector that I'll be uh, using. And I'll be uh, hopefully making a generic yeah, call it a mod, uh, so you can apply that to other smoke detectors as well. So, the smoke detector runs off two AA uh, batteries. Uh, so, not a 9 volt battery, not sure why, but uh, yeah. So, um, we need to remove this tray. And to do that, we need to take the cover off, and as you can see, a little um, gap appears. Now before I continue with anything else, uh, this is at your own risk. Uh, this smoke detector is uh, out of uh, uh, out of its life or however you may call it. Uh, it has beeped uh, indicating that it's end of life. It's not um, reliable anymore. So this is my uh, experimental smoke detector. So let's open it by unhooking the clips and there you go and the last one there you go so nice uh, battery holder now uh, this is a optical uh, smoke detector uh, with a co2 gas based uh, uh, with a co not co2 with a co uh, gas based um, uh, CO detection mechanism and I already can see something RS232 uh, out let me zoom in for you and turn on my light over here it says RS232 out so uh, I think that is going to be fairly interesting because, yeah, you know, you all know the ESP8266. It's capable of communicating via serial, which is basically the RS232 protocol. So, let me try to remove this gunk. Oh, it's, it's, is this, no, this feels really weird. It almost feels like some kind of, a hand cram for your skin. So let's remove uh, it. I'm not sure what's underneath it, but I want a good um, view of the labels. Uh, where do I put? Oh, let me grab a paper. Put it paper. There you go. Uh, yeah, it gives a complete pin out it looks like it for for, for um, remotely managing um, the smoke detector it gives a uh, V battery trick one ground and I think trick two so I suppose that's uh, CO and smoke and I think it will provide a serial interface. Oh, this is the. Um, uh, these are the the LEDs, the power LEDs. This is the power LED and smoke LED, and this is the CO LED. Uh, all right. Well, that's good. I think this is a. Uh, dual color LED. Yeah, there are two. Two um, LEDs in this package, I suppose, for power and uh, smoke. The power is red, and I haven't seen the smoke very much, but my guess is that that one will be green or vice versa. I'm not sure. So, are there any labels over here? No, there aren't. Oh, there something appears. R43. 
an R23 I'm not sure what the RS232 out is because there's only one data pin looks like it all right so um yeah it looks like there is an RS232 out maybe if we remove the board from the housing there are some labels written on the bottom no there aren't oh it's quite uh, quite dirty and dusty Uh, that doesn't really help, I think. Yeah, a little bit. So there are no labels at the bottom. That's a shame. Um, let me place it back. So I think that's going to be scope uh, work. Oscilloscope work to try and decode uh, the whole thing. I'm going to uh, um, Google first. So let's check if Google uh, can find anything. And I just said I'll be using female, but I think the male headers are uh, better here because and that way you can clip the oscilloscope probes on them instead of connecting a wire that you can clip these uh, probes on that um, goes loose all the time so let me grab the yeah there you go end of the solder and let me actually solder the headers onto the board oh, that one's getting hot yeah, this is lead-free solder, and I, I've mixed results with it because now the, um, the solder isn't flown easily. I need to put a hell of a lot of solder on there in order for it to uh, start to flow into the through hole. Oh, that's better. All right, nice. Clean the soldering iron. There you go. So now that's uh, connected nicely. It's a little bit, uh, it's not really that straight, as you can see. It's very not straight, actually. Doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm wanting to do now is to try and hopefully silence the beeper a little bit so that um, when it goes off, because it will go off when you power the device. Uh, not everybody thinks there's a smoke detector alarm going off since that's not the case so let me put some paper in there to hopefully seal it off a little and so um, the battery uh, there were two uh, AA batteries in series so that's a voltage of Three volts, something like that. So let's turn on my power supply at a little under three volts. And connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive like that nice solid connections that looks really satisfying as if it's meant to be so yeah that's the yeah that's the beeper and that didn't work out um, so I guess it's time to try and remove the beeper uh, just for reference, that's how it's oriented because uh, I don't want the beeper to go off whilst testing.
Okay, that should be enough. Now the third leg of the thing. Oh. And I think it is... Yeah, it's uh, removed. As you can see, the leg is... Um, is flying the third leg over here so let's uh, connect the, the power supply again uh, positive to positive positive to positive and negative to negative there. and connect it You can hear a little sound. No. All right. So uh, let's measure the voltage on the um, battery output terminal. So ground and feedback, two point eight volts, which is okay. Nice. So, um, let's hook up my scope uh, then, shall we? So, if we take a look um, at the scope whilst the device is turning on, we can see that there is some di data uh, going across the RS232 uh, line. Uh, so, let me just switch off the, 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 the thing again and use the decode functionality. Go to UART signal RX is yeah that uh, yeah should be okay. No, I'm not sure about the uh, about uh, etc etc etc. So um, display the list decode one. Um, make it a little lower. I'm not sure what this bottom line is, but yeah, maybe the cursor. Oh yeah, that's the cursor. So the code scroll. Let's turn it on again. Oh wait, we need to. Oh, it's doing something. Uh, let's set up a trigger. Serial. You are. Yeah, that's okay. Is this about right? Yeah, that's about right. Okay, I trigger setting. Mission. Just do data. Oh, no. Start. Bus configure. I think it's at this setting. And I'm not sure. And uh, is the decode? Configure properly, yeah, it is. Let's do single triggering and turn it on again. So it has triggered and it's double triggering because of the TX and RX lines. So that's not really what I wanted. So let's go and take a look at the data. Oh, I think it's all zero. Yeah, that's all zero the data. Hmm. Maybe if we increase the um, the choir length. All right, then turn it on. <coughs> so there's a lot more data right now. And let's take a look at the end of the data. Well, we know for sure that there is a RS-232 signal. Oh, uh, well, for sure. We know that there's data on the line, because, you know, we see the, uh, the waveforms. But it's all empty. And... 
That's not um, not what I wanted. Um, let's check. Oop. Let's check what pressing the button does. Uh, nothing really, I think. It's doing nothing. No, that's really, really strange. Hmm. So there's only data available when it starts up. Um, that's not okay. Let me check if I can somehow trigger the device by using a soldering iron, I guess. Let's try to solder underneath it so that we can trigger it. It's it's strange that it shows all zeros. So uh, let's connect the second probe to one of the trigger pins and try to trigger the probe that way so uh, that you can hopefully see the, um, uh, the trigger signal I'm not sure but let's try that trigger 2, let's connect to trigger 2 let's connect the ground lead of the scope probe so trigger 2 channel 2 bring it down a little bit Set up the trigger to an edge channel 2. Uh, okay. Uh, and let's try to uh, trigger it again. Hopefully, this time the probes won't uh, come off. There you go. So it has triggered. But nothing shown on the scope. That's really strange. That is really strange. So there is no data available on the scope whilst the thing is triggering. And I'm questioning the fact. Oh, it stopped triggering. Um, why is the thing right? So let's try to trigger it again. That's strange because there should be uh, uh, some kind of output going on right now. Maybe No, it's it's the thing just doesn't show. That's very strange. So the outputs of the um, smoke detector are aren't doing anything. They aren't doing any anything in particular. And maybe they need a pull down. It could be that they are connected to a pull up at the moment. Um, because yeah, the value is. Um, a one, if you can call it like that. Um, let's check what happens when we connect a one uh, k pull down to the trigger 
open. Yeah, I'm fiddling with the uh, scope probe right now. So I'm gonna do that. And connect it to a pin and now The thing came off, that's not good. Connected to ground. I hope we can stick it in there that will make a contact. Oh, alright, so it's it's low now, it's low. As you can see it's low. The value is low, and let's try to trigger it again. This time without moving the device. I'm going through my solar rather quickly at this uh, point. There you go, so it's triggered. Nothing happens on the skull. Oh. Hmm. I don't think that the pull up is the issue. That's, it's, it's really strange that there is data when the thing boots up, but there isn't any data when the when the actual device triggers. And if we connect to one of the pins right now, it's high. when we connect one of the, the ground lead to it because that might be no. I was thinking it might be the um, cathode or anode of the LEDs that um, are next to it but that isn't the case hey. It doesn't show any serial data anymore now. The serial data is gone. Oh, there it is. So again, it's it's high at this stage. Let's trigger it. Nothing. Any other pin? Also nothing. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's I wasn't expecting the pin labeling or the, the pins not to output anything when the, the, the thing triggered. I wasn't expecting that, so when I connected the pull down ones again, I think these are 
test pins for uh, manufacturer tests. So pull down is connected this time, properly connected. Let's try it again. Okay, so it is triggered. And we see something happening on the on the line. But it isn't an awful lot. And that was also the second line and nothing happened. So I'm not sure what's happening here. But the trigger 1 and trigger 2 are not outputting any um, any data. Uh, so that's a bit of a problem when actually trying to um, yeah trying to connect to uh, the device and let it trigger uh, a system when the smoke detector triggers. Hmm. So, as you can see, over here, uh, yeah, I, I used uh, this pull-down resistor and connected the scope probes like that, and they don't show anything, uh, while trigger 1 is always high, and trigger 2 is currently high, but I... I uh, couldn't find a way to um, uh, let the single chains when triggered. Let's press the button. Something is happening with the line when I press the button. But I think it's power supply issues. Or issues ripple that's causing the line to uh, vary. And not an um, on purpose output. Yeah, so there isn't any data available at the RS232 um, thing. That's a bit of an issue. What's this pin? That's a bit of an issue. Uh, so I'm going to um, do some more stuff on the internet. And hopefully um, I'll uh, find something really soon. And I'll be sure to make a video about that. So we can turn this project into a... Uh, a good and working uh, solution for smoke detecting um, with the ESP8266. So uh, I hope to see you in the next uh, smoke detection video. Bye! Thanks for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time!